This episode of the Craftsman Online Podcast is sponsored by Bricks Masons. From elegant Masonic rings that showcase your commitment to our craft, to finely crafted regalia and apparel that honor your tradition, Bricks Masons delivers quality and craftsmanship that truly stands out. Shop now at BricksMasons.com and use promo code CRAFTSMAN, that's C-R-A-F-T-S-M-E-N, to receive free shipping with your first order. The comments, opinions, and views shared during this program are of those individual Freemasons and do not reflect the official position of a Grand Lodge, Concordant Body, Appendant Body, Masonic Authority, or CraftsmanOnline.com. Welcome to the Craftsman Online Podcast, the only five-star rated Masonic podcast endorsed by the Grand Lodge of New York. And now your host, Worshipful Brother, Michael Arce. Welcome back to the Craftsman Online Podcast. You've joined us for an episode on One Day Degree Freemasons. This is probably one of the most... Uh, I, I don't want to say divisive, but one of the most contested subjects in Freemasonry is the idea of getting all of your Masonic degrees, the first three degrees in the Blue Lodge, in one day. And I thought the best person to talk to about this is a brother who's gone through it. And we welcome in worshipful brother Lee Katz. Thanks for coming on the Craftsman Online Podcast, brother. Sure. Brother Michael. I know I outlined like all three degrees a single day to an interested gentleman or someone that just has a casual interest in Freemasonry. That's really not going to mean a lot to them. But when we talk about the lightning degrees and getting all of those three degrees, uh, it is <laughs> getting thrown into the Masonic swimming pool of information. Before we get into the one day experience, I want to talk a little bit about your Masonic career outside of the degrees, what was it like that led you to lead to knock on the door of a lodge? To start with, I'm a fourth generation Mason. Uh, I've actually found that out after you sent me your your questions, because I thought I, all this time I was just a second generation being, you know, me and my father and my brothers. But it turns out that it actually goes farther back. It's my father's father and my father's grandfather. So four generations. I, I couldn't I couldn't stop there, you know. <laughs> I couldn't let it stop at my dad. <laughs> so was it something that you talked a lot about in your family, Freemasonry? And or was it, hey, I just discovered this, I found a ring or some sort of heirloom of the family was getting passed down? No, it, it turns out that my mom was big in Eastern Star, which those of your listeners that know, that's like the female version, kinda sorta. Um and my dad was big into the Masons. And my dad was really cool about it growing up. Um, he entered the Masons in like, I don't know, early 80s. And he was real cool with it. He never said anything, but he was always around when I had the questions. And of course, back when I joined, you had to be 21. So when I came 21 or when I was getting close, the questions started coming a little more freely to me to give to him because I was always doing stuff with one of those two groups. And there was plenty of people for me to pick their brains. And they all pretty much took me under their wing and said, yeah, you know, anytime you have questions about anything that's going on, if I can answer it, I will. So if there was an honorary Masonic degree, you kind of earned yours <laughs> as a child and as a young person. When you had the idea of joining a lodge, how did the concept of, hey, with someone that has this lineage, we're just going to move you up to the one-day degree? Did they figure you knew most of, you were familiar with the story, so you didn't need to sit through the whole class? No, just the contrary. I, I knew very little going in, because at that time of era, if you want to call it that, people still took it on the on the thought of, this is this is a secret society, so we can't spread any you know too much because back then the internet was still growing up. It wasn't it wasn't a big thing. There was no YouTube, uh, and and books were you know few and far between because everybody maintained the the secretive aspect of it. Basically, you could call me a Lewis, I guess, 
I, I don't want to say destined to get that way, but there were certain doors that were probably open to me a little quicker than otherwise. You were growing up, and I, I'm, fig- I'm guessing we're the same age when you say I was around before the internet. Like I love telling my kids that as well. <laughs> before cell phones, even. I mean, we had to go to next door to talk to somebody. Yes, I had a bag phone. We're that old. <laughs> When you talk about being around members of the family, I'm sure they were talking more about Freemasonry or Masonic activities as like a fraternity or an organization and less on kind of the X's and O's, the esoteric secrets that kind of would go right over the head of really a lot of young people. They just don't really show an interest in the ancient mysteries or or any of that yet. So you really didn't know what you were going to get into when it came to the degrees to begin with. So the idea of getting them all in one day, you wouldn't know that there was a difference of maybe a little time in between each degree. And my dad made it very clear when when he came up with, you know, telling me that they're doing this all in a day thing. And, and that's what I used to call it. In fact, I still call it. I am a member of the all in a day club. Okay. You, you call it the one day Mason. I'm the all in a day club because there was over 250 people at that thing. And this is just one of, I think they did seven of them total. It took on more of a, uh, appearance and a feeling of you're going into an orientation. And because this was either the first or the second time that they had done it ever, it was still uncharted territory for a lot of the people that were doing this. I mean, the people that were putting it on, the mentors that were sitting with you, even my dad, he's like, I'm not really sure why I have to be here, but I am here as your mentor. I'm sure there's brothers that are still trying to wrap their head around this. Like, wow, 250 guys in one area, a full day of just three of the Blue Lodge degrees. But anyone that's joined the Scottish Rite, even the York Rite to some extent, you do typically get more than one of those degrees in a shot. Um, heck, in Scottish Rite, I think that you get three or four like right off the rip, uh, depending on which jurisdiction that you're in. So that concept doesn't seem so foreign to me. I, I think... The shock for me would be knowing what that experience was like and as a interested gentleman that's making those knocks on the door and getting to be a part of the ritual experience where you were more of an observer, I'm guessing. There's no way they had 250 of them. Oh, no, no, no. There there was an exemplar, basically. Those that are from Scottish Rite, you know what an exemplar is. And, And that's what they did. They picked one person per degree, Mm. he went up onto a stage and you basically sat and watched, uh, just like in a Scottish Rite degree. You sat and watched. The only difference is that, unlike the Scottish Rite degrees, when it came to doing the obligation, that's where my mentor came into play. My mentor had a mini Bible that he was issued on the way in, and he essentially was there to make sure that the Bible was oriented properly, and I was to follow along with the exemplar. I was to give the obligation audibly with the exemplar, so everybody could hear it. Most of all, my my coach. We're, we're in stadium or we're in uh, auditorium seating, so you can't exactly do the steps, but we did a variation of it and he was there to help me with that other than that it was all done on the stage we just kind of took it in like a sponge because i'm thinking back to and and i'm sure you probably had a little bit of this as well the nervous energy of not really knowing what to expect yeah except you didn't have to go into the preparation room and be clothed as an entered apprentice for any of the degrees you got to stay in your suit and tie lucky you (laughs) The going through the experience, like I remember being nervous in the preparation room, having the butterflies, being told to change to be clothed as an entered apprentice, going through the knocking on the door, going through the door, how I was received, listening for all the little sounds, being blindfolded, the weird odors that also somehow always exist in a Masonic building where you were in a theater, basically, but you probably did have some of those similar experiences, right? Um. Not really. <laughs> okay. I, like I said, it was walking in like an orientation, um, like I was 
my first day of high school. <laughs> and it really was. It was it was really like that. It's like, okay, here, here you are. Now this is how today's program's gonna go. Mm. And and we didn't have to get dressed in any certain way. I mean, they did tell us dress comfortably. Well, of course, not knowing what I'm getting into, that can mean a you know variation of things. It's like I would be afraid to say that in today's world post COVID, oh, you'd have guys show up in pajama pants. Oh, absolutely, and sweatshirts, you know, yeah. hoodies, whatever. But no, I I I kind of took it from. This is where I relied on my dad because my dad was at that time he was a district deputy. So he had his ear to the ground of what was supposed to happen. What was the the grand jurisdiction that was performing the all day degrees? This in this particular case, it was uh Illinois. Okay. This was in the late nineties, correct? Ninety six. Okay. Yeah. Mid nineties then. Yeah. Yeah. And this was a lot of the one day degrees or all day degrees or lightning degrees. They were a response by certain grand lodges as a way to, Hey, what if we could take the experience of being a Mason and do that in one day as a way to increase more people's interest because the quote unquote traditional path and I don't want to sound like a Masonic snob or anything, but it is kind of like, I'm used to it. Don't worry about it. (laughs) <laughs> just for folks that are like whoa what are they talking about like the traditional approach for degrees is much like in school where you will take some time in between each degree you'll work with a mentor or a coach to study the work become proficient and then you can then go from the first the second and then the third where in lee's in- instance brother lee's instance it was bang you got it all in one day um and then you walked out and and here's the thing that i had kind of joked about it earlier to start the podcast, but you literally got thrown into the pool of Masonic education where I see most guys after their entered apprentice degree, they can't even, they struggle to remember a part or even what was happening during the degree while they were there witnessing it in person. What was your initial response? Like, bang, you're now raised to the sublime degree of master Mason. You're sitting next to your dad. What's the first thing you ask him? This is something that, that, sticks in my mind and and i'll give you a little uh, story behind it i'm jewish at 13 jewish boys go through bar mitzvahs the running joke at least around here was in my speech at my bar mitzvah a lot of the boys will say today i am a fountain pen because that was a common gift for a bar mitzvah so i looked at my dad after everything was said and done And he's like, so straight face, everything. And I said, today I am a fountain pen. (laughs) He just completely lost it. He had no clue of it coming up. I got to say, you have the best lines so far. (laughs) Best (laughs) one-liners. I, I, yeah, this is how I am. Sorry. But no, it, it, it was very awe-inspiring, but because I went in with a certain mindset, one of your questions on here was um, something along the lines of, how did you prepare yourself to become a Mason in one day? Yeah. And my only response to that is, when I signed on the dotted line, as it were, I knew I was taking a commitment for life. And that, in and of itself, weighs very heavy on somebody that's serious about doing this. Mm. Not only because my dad was a Mason and my brothers are Masons, but because I know that this is a commitment for life. I mean, what I do here will follow me, well, almost 30 years now. So, and I'm still going strong. Glad you brought that up. Uh, Worshipful Brother Lee, we're talking about the all day degree Masons and you reached out to me after hearing a couple guests on the Craftsman Online podcast make comments about the one day degree Masons or the lightning degree Masons. And I have always held the opinion that normally I don't look down on one day Masons or all day Masons and that they got all their degrees in one day. That's great. I just feel for them because they missed that experience that I had of the knees knocking, the nervous sweats, the <laughs> weird little pajama outfit you have to put on, the smells, the, you know. The- I wouldn't say I'm missing it. No, nope, not <laughs> missing it at all. <laughs>
The Craftsman Online Podcast is now sponsored by BricksMasons.com, our favorite destination for all of our Masonic shopping needs. Whether it's apparel for yourself or a cool gift idea for another brother, make BricksMasons.com your online marketplace where tradition meets innovation. Looking for an apron for yourself, your lodge, or your favorite Freemason? Well, BricksMasons offers a wide selection of aprons for different Masonic organizations and degrees like our Blue Lodge, Chapter, Council, Knights Templar, English Royal Arch, the Royal Order of Scotland. Scotland, Scottish Rite, OES, literally I could go on because they do. And as with many of their products, customization options are available on these aprons through machine or hand embroidery, allowing you to personalize your apron and wear it with pride. Visit BricksMasons.com and explore their extensive catalog. Elevate your Masonic experience with style and substance. Plus, Craftsman Online podcast listeners use promo code CRAFTSMAN, that's C-R-A-F-T-S-M-E-N, at checkout to enjoy free shipping with your first order. Brothers, do you remember how you felt when you were first called to Freemasonry? The excitement of each degree? If you can still feel that call of the East, you're encouraged to apply to join the Scottish Rite Northern Masonic Jurisdiction. The Scottish Rite offers Master Masons, like you, an opportunity to continue your Masonic journey and delve deeper into our craft through their 29 degrees. And there's an easy way to join the Scottish Rite. It's called Join the Rite Night. A virtual initiation where you can witness the requisite fourth degree and officially become a Scottish Rite Mason. There's seven opportunities to join online from February 1st to April 25th. Here's what you do. Visit the Scottish Rite online at srnmj.us and click on the Join button. You can also join in person at a Scottish Rite reunion near you. Your journey to the 32nd degree in Freemasonry awaits. Take the first step at srnmj.us and click on the join button today. And I think what some brothers fail to see is that, well, yes, the one day degrees were an attempt for Grand Lodges to improve membership numbers. After you reach out to me, I ran some numbers and I was looking at research from the Grand Lodge of Texas and the Grand Lodge of Washington, also the Masonic Service Association of the United States. And they have data that suggests that one day conferrals are a viable way to bring in new members, that the retention rate for these one day Masons is very close to the, and in some case, it may even be slightly higher by 12 points than traditional masons how do you feel when you hear that when you hear the idea that well maybe your experience is a little bit different than mine statistically speaking one day masons actually perform better and better in some cases than a traditional mason when we went through the grand masters festivals which is what it was called here uh it 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 started out as grand masters festivals they did about seven of them like i said and then they turned it into a quarterly bi-yearly, I don't know, whatever it was, semi-annually, it became the Blue Lightning. Ooh, so nice. Blue Lightning sounds so much better. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, my dad being where he was in position, he he had access to research, but he said that he saw that it was about a 10% uh, retention rate between whether you were going to traditional record, uh, traditional path or the all in a day, it was still 10% active. So it kind of balanced itself out. Now yours being 12 points difference, I think that's great. Mm-hmm. But you have to imagine the fact that when these were thought up, it wasn't a matter of gaining more interest into the Masons. It truly was a membership drive. Let's not, you know, bull around it. It was a membership drive. Let's bring as many bodies in, in as small of an amount of time as we can to boost our numbers. Because as we still are feeling today, we're reeling from the fact that all these older Masons are dying off, either literally or figuratively. And you need to bring more fresh blood into the fraternity. At least in Illinois' case, that was the whole purpose behind the Grand Masters Festival slash Blue Lightning. I was staggered when I saw that because I thought for sure, and it's only because of what I've heard, is that 
the traditional route is the way to do it. And we know that Masons love their traditions. They <laughs> don't like to try new things. But I started thinking about it. I'm like, man, I can't remember if it was 12 of us or 13 of us that went through in my class initially when we started uh, to go through a degree program, which it just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller until the third degree when there were literally three of us around the Bible taking that final obligation. Eventually, the rest, some of the rest caught up. One never got past the entered apprentice degree, which still baffles me to this day. But looking back and seeing who's active out of those, let's say, 13 in my mother lodge, two of us. Two of us are still active in the craft. One uh, was elected and installed as the worshipful brother of another lodge that he affiliated with. And I finally got my chance at that. But I'm sitting here thinking, okay, out of 250 men that were in that room that day that you took your degree, I wonder how many of them are still active. I bet you you're going to have more than two. Every experience in Freemasonry, it really depends on the individual and the old, you get out of it what you put into it, right? And if it took me a year to go through all of my degrees, and it took you a day to go through all of yours... Don't be jealous. <laughs> I mean, you just missed out on the tears that would come from the... Uh, <laughs> I didn't miss it. <laughs> from all the studying and being... Oh, no, we did. Now, let, let me put that to bed. We did still study. I still had to I still had to prove proficient. Okay. Once I got through the all in a day, I still had to come back and give one, two, and if I could, all three of them in catechism. Hmm. Okay. So that is that is one of the caveats to doing this is, okay, you're a Mason, but not quite. See, in Illinois, the first two are required. The third is an option. Same deal in New York. Yeah, it's okay. the same there as well. You know, back to the idea that it's all about the ind individual. You get out of it what you put into it. I know brothers that went through all three degrees that it took them a year, maybe more. Who cares? really on this point. Right. But after they got that master Mason's degree, they, some of them never came back. Some of them never advanced and really went searching for that Masonic light that we were promised through all of the degree work. Right. And I always feel those are the brothers I feel the most sad for is because the time that they put into doing this and then the money that they invested into joining and getting a suit and tie and just to walk away from something, and it wasn't that important to them. And maybe if they would have just gotten that experience in one day, they would have been able to go, eh, not really for me. I think I'm going to move on instead of wasting that year of their life. And it is quite possible. We, we, you know, 250 plus people, you're bound to have, I would venture to guess, probably half of them. Just, just cut it right in half right off the bat because they, you know, they, they were steered towards this for whatever reason, maybe maybe promises of something that never happened, maybe a little bit of deception. I have no idea what brought them in. I know what brought me in. So I'm sure that somebody had somebody had to have their uh, preconceptions just completely destroyed. You also have a, a bit, I would say, a bit of an advantage. You have a family that's very tied to the fraternity. Your dad's a, you know, a past district deputy uh, grand you know, master. So you, you had some authority, Masonic authority that was around you to help you and guide you. Not to say that you weren't going to seek it out yourself, but, you know, a little bit more structure than, than maybe other guys have had. Oh, no, I'm sure he helped. <laughs> he helped quite a bit. That's the part I wanted to get to is where you went from that one day. And to know that I'm talking with a brother who basically has been a master mason as long as I've been out of school, which it's crazy to think about that. Wow. Okay, now I feel really old. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Well, at high, I mean, I think you, <laughs> if, you, if you took your obligation in 96, that was the, my senior year of high school. Like, for me to look back and go, wow, I don't even remember that young man anymore. I see pictures of him. You're, you're not helping, Brother Mike. <laughs> you're not helping at all. And he's not that much older than me. But um, when we think about that one day start, right, 
I'd really like for you to walk us down the path because this was the part when we had a little phone conversation beforehand and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get you on the podcast to talk about this because again, I sit in lounge with brothers that have no excuse not to really go seek that light and have had all of these quote unquote advantages of being a traditional Mason. And here's Brother Lee. So, so tell us your, take us through your path. First, for the record, I graduated high school in 90. So I got you only by six years. But, but that being said, um, this actually made me think because you've heard of how you can take things for granted after a while. This is how I feel my Masonic career has been, my Masonic life. Mm. I took a lot of things for granted as they were happening, and and it took something like this to make me flash back and, and see what I did. Uh, 1996, I was raised as a Master Mason. 1997, which happened to be, I went right into a chair. I went in as a junior deacon for my lodge. Wow. Okay. They put you right to work. Well, it's the common problem of not enough bodies, but too many chairs. So where are you going to start? Yeah, you were part of the solution to that problem. As you're saying it, it's like, yeah, we, we had this guy we did this for in one day, and he's automatically contributing to the lodge. So like it already. Right. So became junior deacon of my lodge. At that time, I was doing home-based computer repair installations, stuff like that. So I tried really hard to get my lodge to subscribe to get an email account because if I see it coming gang, you guys are going to want to get on the internet. Well, what's this internet? Trust me. You're just going to want to get on it. I went ahead and got a life membership in my home lodge in my mother lodge. When I moved to Wisconsin, I went with a regular membership. First of all, I should tell you there was a bit of growing pains because Illinois is AF and AM. Wisconsin is F and AM. And all I know at this point is Illinois ritual. Because mm -hmm. you were talking on one of your podcasts recently about, you know, knowing the different responses in the different jurisdictions. I knew my response, F and AM versus AF and AM. It, it's, it can be a bit of a trip. Then I moved to another town in Wisconsin, went through the chairs there. And in that particular time, I went ahead and took a perpetual slash life membership there. Let's jump ahead to 2007. I was actually very well encouraged to join the uh, Eau Claire, Valley of Eau Claire uh, Ancient Accepted Scottish Rite. I was a webmaster for the Valley until I left. I moved back to Illinois, here to Peoria, where I live now. Long story short, I end up becoming their webmaster. I am also third year in of being part of the line. I'm in the uh, Lodge of Perfection. Last year, they asked me to jump up to Deputy Master, which is, for those who don't know, the second chair before the uh, before the top. So before the top of the Lodge of Perfection. But wait, there's more. Like Billy Mays says, in 21, I got the Peoria Cross for the uh, uh, accepted Scottish Rite. It's just so fascinating to me because we had, I didn't ask the question. We talked enough about it, but the stereotypes that linger around the all day, one day Masons, the lightning in a can Masons, oh, they get just that one degree. And oh. and for you to sit here and say, hey, I'm, I'm one chair away from leading a lodge of perfection. That to me, we don't need to say anything more like that. There's, I think there's enough right there. Uh, in my mind, this debate is over. You have proven to be everything that we say you should be doing in uh, throughout our ritual and our degree work. You're exemplifying it. So you are my exemplar as a all day Mason, Brother Lee. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. One of your questions was what led you to actually, I think it was what is the biggest stereotype or challenge that I've experienced by being an all in a day? Mm. And I wanted to bring this up because I'm sure I'm not the only one that has these feelings, thoughts, uh, misgivings, whatever you want to call it, whether it was your podcast with your guest that kind of dug into the one day Masons, you've heard the term in Harry Potter, because I know you love to mix the Masons with the comics and all this other stuff, um, which I, I, I don't mind saying that 
I binged your entire podcast three seasons over two weeks at work. You should get an award for that. <laughs> you, you've heard the term from Harry Potter of a mudblood. And essentially, that's more or less the feeling I got whenever brothers around me start digging into the one-day Masons. Mm. Made me feel like a substandard Mason, as it were. Um, I found that the ridicule, though, managed to be my inspiration. That led me to do what I've done so far in my Masonic career, my Masonic life. Just let that sit for a minute. I, I I don't mean to be bragging, but I seem to be like, at this point, I feel like I'm an authority about something in masonry, okay? I've had those experiences. I've done degrees. I've been, you know, I've played King Hiram, I don't know how many times. I've been in those positions to do something about being a one-day mason. I've, I've done a degree. The man has passed. He was a brother. He, he passed in life. And I'll always remember this. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. He comes up and he knocks. And in my most burly, thundering voice, who comes here? He came up to me after the degree was done. And he's like, yeah, you scared the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> This has been the Craftsman Online Podcast. Again, I want to thank my guest coming on this week, Brother Lee Katz. If you've enjoyed this episode and you'd like to hear some more, you can tell Siri or Alexa to play the Craftsman Online Podcast. We're available on all streaming platforms with new episodes every Monday morning. Until next time, let peace and harmony prevail. Craftsman Online.